statement, sir. Because we, you are not, uh, we are not able to. Yeah, you are a presenter now. You can share. I think. Santosh ji, otherwise, can we can we start sharing from our side? Now, sir, your screen is shared. You have to share the presentation. You are sharing the screen in which we are visible. You have to share the presentation. Asutosh. Yes, sir. Ah, can you share from your side? I have sent uh, you sir. the PPT. Uh, sir. Yes, yes. My, sir, my, uh, you know, our NIC team is, uh, I requested my uh, NIC team and doing it, sir. Just wait okay. for two minutes, please. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have already requested them. They are, they are just doing. Now it is okay, sir. Are you able to see the slides? It is okay. Uh, sir, not yet. To... No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. They are loading it like. No, this is first slide. They are able to see the first slide. Are you able to see the first slide, sir? They have already shared the first slide. No. no. Satoshi, uh, what is the problem? Because I am able to see his slides. But I am not able to see it. 
संतोष जी माय वॉइस इज क्लियर दीक्षित सर माय वॉइस इज क्लियर यस यस बट आई एम नॉट एबल टू सी जस्ट अ मिनट सर एक्चुअली यस आई शेयर नाउ ही मस्ट बी शेयरिंग अगेन ये फिर फाइल टू वाले टू गोया नेशन येट ही इज जस्ट शेयरिंग नाउ इज इट ओके नाउ इज इट ओके सर आर यू एबल टू सी द प्रेजेंटेशन नो नथिंग इज कमिंग ऑन माय यस नाउ इट हैज कम यू कैन सी द फर्स्ट स्लाइड सर sir i think there is yes. some time delay in your in your signals that's why you are able you are re receiving after a few ses, few of seconds can we start uh, sir uh, santosh ji can we start okay thank you so good morning to all Today we have a very interesting and important topic related with dissemination of Indian Standard Time. How the time meteorology and it is impacting the Indian society or our society. We are all aware this time dissemination project is being run society. by the Department of Consumer Affairs. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This time dissemination project is being is being run by the Department. Of So are you able to hear me? Yes, okay. Yeah. Very good. Sir, you have you have seen the slide? First slide. Are you able to see the first slide? Yes, I have. I I have seen it. First slide. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So today we are having this topic related with time meteorology and impact of the society. As all aware. the department of consumer affairs in association with national physical laboratory and indian space research organization is working on a prestigious project of dissemination of indian standard time in the country this topic is important what is your audio is working yes sir yes sir audio is working okay sir this is up is it uh, okay whether my voice is not clear no your voice is clear Yes, there is no sir uh, mr uh, mr banerji i think the problem is from your side because otherwise from rest of the sides it is okay i think you kindly check your signals because others it is okay okay sir so uh, today we have to with us uh, dr p banerji who is the yes sir now we are able to hear you clearly we have with us professor banerji who is the retired scientist from national physical laboratory has large number of uh, awards research papers and he has done a lot of work uh, for the dissemination of indian standard time maintenance of indian standard time and generation of indian standard time through various methods using the gps system glonass system etc sir we are we are uh, we are honored to be uh, to listen from you the new aspect of the meteorology in time over to you sir we have with us uh, prof mr b n dikshit who is our director of legal meteorology former director of legal meteorology sir i would like to request you to kindly speak two words before we start the session please sir uh, ashutosh ji thank you for giving this opportunity i welcome uh, dr banerji also uh, he is the one of the leading scientist in the field of time dissemination's time dissemination is very important subject and uh, fortunately this work was given to us uh, uh, and with the agreement of the npl national physical laboratory then at present the national physical laboratory is maintaining the time dissemination work but they are not able to disseminate it so they are just connecting with uh, other uh, countries uh, 
and uh, now our rehearsals are fully ready and uh, like uh, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Faridabad, Guwahati and uh, one more laboratory is there, uh, Bhubaneswar. So there the time dissemination work will be started so, uh, and it is upon the uh, National Physical Laboratory to provide the atomic clocks and all that very things. When it will be delivered so, uh, in first stage, it will be uh, worked through the National Physical Laboratory only for three years. So after that, uh, it will be handed over to the RRSS. Uh, so first three years is lying with the uh, National Physical Laboratory and we are waiting the response of the National Physical Laboratory in this very field for uh, such great work which has not been done in India. So that will be one of the prestigious work when this work will be started. The benefit and other things will be described by Dr. Banerjee because I am not uh, interested to talk on that very topics. So I thank Astosi. I welcome Professor uh, Banerjee Sahib also for the presentations. I hope the all the audience will be benefited from this and uh, industry will be also uh, participating so they will get the advantage of this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, sir. As we have Professor Banerjee, so I think more than 40 years of experience in the same field, having a lot of exposure in national, international universities. So, sir, I think that it will be a wonderful exercise for all of us to understand the metrology of time and certainly how the, it is impacting our society. Secondly, sir, how to have the rules or the laws on the dissemination of time. We would like to discuss with you, not maybe, maybe during this seminar after that, so that we can start having this time in, the, in India, one nation, one time. Over to you, sir. Please, Professor Banerjee, sir. Thank you, sir. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ragarwal and um, uh, Dr. Dixis for the nice words. And uh, let me start the topic on time metrology and its impact in society. And uh, if you recall, I talked about these topics in a little different context almost a year back in the same seminar. Um, so let me give you the same topic, but with a different flavor and uh, hope uh, that will be uh, useful for the audience who are listening to this seminar. Uh, and the topics, as you have rightly mentioned, it is a time metrology and its society and its impact on the society. I have organized the talk uh, in the way that first I'll talk about the concept of the time and the clock, and then I'll search for the better clocks, how it is developing, then how the time is measured, and then time kicking and time transfer, which you were talking about, and what how it impacts on the society. So next slide, please. So now there is a different perception of time. And if you look at the uh, internet and the different books, there are many definitions of time. Uh, but uh, the time, the definition that I'm quite comfortable with is that time is the continued sequence and the existence of the events. But the one important thing, whatever may be the definition, the philosophy and accept time, different time and with the different people. For example, if you talk about the flow of time, time is a continuous, goes from the present uh, to the future and leaving the past behind. And, but if you re recall our Hinduism and Sikhism, different religions, there is a concept of cyclic view. That means uh, there is a birth, rebirth, and again birth, and uh, death and birth. So. That continues again. If you recall, then our Hindu mythology says there is a Shatta Juk, Treta Juk, Draupad Juk, and Kal Juk. And this repeats in a cycles. Again, there is a, a concept of the uniformity time. 
Newton says real time flows at a steady state. But whereas Einstein uh, says that there is no master clock, it depends on the measurement of time, depends on the motion of the each observer. I don't like to go into that conflicting views and the concept, but what I would like to mention, fortunately, there is a general consensus on the measuring principle of time. That is what I am going to talk about. And the, my, my whole talk will consider only that part. Next, please. Okay, as you know, there are seven base units of time. For example, a uh, kilogram for mass, a meter for length, second for time, and ampere for the uh, electric current, and, and, and the uh, three candle of the a mole from this. Uh, out of that, one unit is a one in a second. Next, please. And please change the slides when I'll say next. So, the but the second has a unique place in the sense that uh, in different ways. For example, time cannot be appreciated apprehended by physical sense means that unlike meter, kg and all these things, you cannot touch it, you cannot see it. And it's a dynamic system. But next, please. Uh, so the second is truly independent. You can see, I will show you in the next year that uh, a second is truly independent and the uh, it independent of the another uh, unit, other unit, and it, it assumes very more. That second is a very central to the metrology, and it it uh, convert all other units from the second itself. So, so this is one important thing is that, that only one unit that is mole, that sub amount of substance is not related to the second. I can, you can, if you look at the red arrows that all generate from the second, except it, it doesn't go to mole. So se second is very important. Next, please. And, uh, the and the second has also the more resolution and less uncertainty. Uh, for example, you can see the second uh, uh, here it is a little missing it is there, but it is 10 to the power minus 15 for second the uncertainty. Whereas uh, for meter and the kilogram ampere mole is for uh, um, for more. For example, it's 10 to the minus 8, minus 8, and 10 to the minus 4, and 1 is 10 to the minus 7. Next, please. So, in, uh, in uh, time and frequency metrology, there are three types of measurement we always cover. One is frequency. Uh, that means it is rate of repetitive event, and its unit is per second and hertz. This is it's not exactly second, per second. And for the oscillation, we call it hertz. And it can be measured with a frequency counter. And uh, there is another next input. For example, what is frequency? For example, these metrology, uh, legal metrology conduct a seminar uh, every, every week, that is every Saturday. Its frequency is one by seven days, one upon seven days. That is the frequency. And time interval. Time interval is the time elapsed between the start and the stop of an event. It is measured through time interval counter, uh, time interval measuring device. For example, in this case, time interval is, for example, I am given uh, the time of two hours. That means start of the lock, my talk and the end of this talk is two hours. This is time interval. Next, please. <laughs> the third part is that 
clock at this time of the day it records when the event and it is it requires a clock the clock keeps the track of the increment of the time and displaying it and for example i am supposed to start my talk at 11 o'clock and that 11 o'clock will be shown by the clock by the, the real clock so here we can see the, the three items is always used in the measurement except the frequency time interval and the epoch time has an unit of second of course we use our minute second that is the higher denominations of the base unit next please now the unit of time interval is uh, second as i mentioned and the uh, there are uh, subcategories like millisecond 10 to the power minus 3 microsecond 10 to the power minus 6 and so on next please similarly um, frequency has a unit of hertz and you can call it in the higher frequency we call call it kilohertz that means 10 to the power 3 megahertz 10 to the power 6 and gigahertz 10 to the power uh, 9 and so on next please now the history of timekeeping please next please uh, how do you measure time and how do you get the time throughout the history if you see that we are always looking for a repeated repeating event and this phenomena and that phenomena should have a base length of record repetition and a well defined beginning and also we should give a name to the successive year so you in the primitive ways we always looked at the sky to see a repeating event for example day what is day day is the time interval between successive sunrise so that is one day the month is the the moon has a different faces so this face one face of the moon comes uh, repeats after a month so there are 12 faces in a year and the year is the revolution of the earth around the sun to complete one revolution that is one year so this is how the in the olden days people used to see the time which we follow indirectly right now next please so now the how do you measure the time now the one important thing is that the unlike other unit which is a decimal sum used in the counting, we do not use in the in the clock system we do not use the decimal system we use a sexagesimal system because the olden days around 2000 bc uh, in sumer they started uh, to count with the fingers so there are 12 finger joints on each hand and and it is possible for an illiterate person to count 12 with a thumb as a pointer and touching each finger joints and similarly we have five fingers and for 12 times is 60 so that is how the whole uh, 60 day we have sexagesimal system started the in the ancient days where uh, the 12 hours was indicated uh, for the whole day half of the day because of the religious rituals reasons and the time then what was divided by 24 hours per day and 60 minutes per hour and 60 seconds per minute that is how the it is a very special in the sense that uh, it doesn't follow the uh, uh, decimal system but in the sub second we always go for the decimal system again and one interesting thing is that the sexagesimal system is used in the measurement of angle and measurement of latitude and longitude next please next please okay so uh, uh, the nature of oscillations uh, uh, shows the clock sundial uh, is a very primitive clock indicating uh, indicated by the time of the day by the position of the shadow on the object and this has a disadvantage is that it cannot work in the night because uh, sun already set by that time next please so uh, there are different uh, you might have uh, be aware that in india there are uh, uh, maharaja jai singh has set up uh, five jantar mantar in uh, uh, in uh, india uh, out of that four is still existing 
one in Delhi, one is Jaipur, one is Ujjain, and one in Varanasi. The Mathura has not has been demolished by different previous um, uh, uh, in the previous kingdom. And the important uh, I only covered these two because Jaipur is the uh, has a uh, sundial which is very accurate, and whereas Ujjain has a sundial which is uh, located in the uh, uh, latitude of the Tropic of Capricorn, oh, yes, Cancer, because their sun is rightly over it. That is why I'm in mean, uh, showing these two. Next, please. And then is the mechanical clock, uh, which is uh, which is based on the water flow of water, and that was first built by in China. And it is better than sundial in the sense that it works in the night and the cloudy day. Next, please. But it doesn't work in a in a very cold places where water may freeze. Next, please. And the best in the mechanical clock system is the Bartho pendulum, where uh, by Galileo first observed the phenomenon of pendulum, and he wanted to have a clock based on the pendulum. But unfortunately, before his uh, uh, life ended, uh, he couldn't complete the uh, uh, development of the clock based on pendulum. Next, please. And only after 60 years after the pendulum, uh, it was Huygens first developed the pendulum clock in, in uh, 1656. And uh, this is a first uh, pendulum. And after that, a lot of pendulum has been developed. You'll, uh, in olden days, it was always a pendulum clock uh, was there. And as a, um, a symbol of uh, culture, the, uh, we all know about the Big Ben, which is a very important uh, clock based on the pendulum. Next, please. And the one important development in the uh, in the uh, mechanical uh, mechanical clock is that escapement escapement mechanism escapement mechanism is which controls the transfer of oscillation of the source to a counting mechanism. That is, suppose if uh, the oscillation is a pendulum, uh, with each swing the the um, uh, wheel will uh, move one uh, uh, tooth, and that is how it will show the counting. Next, please. So this is this sorts clock. It is again a little improvement on the pendulum clock uh, so that it is independent of the environmental effect. Next, please. So let us look at the what was the different accuracies of the different clock we just not talked about. One is that sundial. No uh, measurement system were available at that time because uh, there was no other better clock than sundial. The Varge escapement, and it was uh, uh, started in 14th century. It has an accuracy of only 15 minutes in a day, uh, and the frequency of accuracy was only 10 to the power minus 2. Then came the pendulum, which is again a big breakthrough. You can see that it has jumped from 15 minutes to 10 second accuracy, and there was a little uh, improvement with the time on the uh, accuracy is on the pendulum. So, for example, in Harrison chronometer, it was it went as good as 340 milliseconds, and the short pendulum it was as good as 10 milliseconds, and that was the improvement. Next, please. <coughs> now, there was a lot of research going on uh, since uh, the mechanical clock was different. How to improve the clock? The clock, it was always established that frequency source is the heart of the clock. So we'll have to get a better frequency source. And then the other thing is that just counting mechanism and display setting. So that is a very trivial thing. So there was a continuous effort to search for a better clock and better source. Next, please. Next, please.
next please so the at the end uh, then then there was a breakthrough again after the mechanical clock is that based on res uh, resonance of a physioelectric properties of quartz so so that is a uh, uh, that is a, what we today call it by quartz clock so it is a tcxo ocxo and this is a very good clock and uh, that first it was developed uh, in the bell laboratory in 1927 and with an accuracy um, uh, better than 10 to the power minus 7 that is 1 ppm we call it so you will find most of the clocks these days based on the quartz crystal oscillator and quartz crystal oscillator has a base frequency is 32768 now after that the yes please next so the basic breakthrough and the revolution in the time keeping device is the development of atomic clock the atom all you know is a consist of uh, uh, neutron proton as uh, in the nucleus and it is revolving uh, electron around nucleus next please so that phenomena next please uh, the concept of atomic clock is utilizes the concept that it was uh, understood that the uh, electron has an energy it has a different discrete energy and it can go from one energy higher energy to the lower energy by emitting uh, 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 electromagnetic signal and uh, uh, so that is the concept that is being used for the development of atomic clock next please general block diagram about the atomic clock is that there is a physics package which physics package is a different physical element but that suppose if it is a cesium clock then physics package is, is different uh, if it is a rubidium clock if it is a hydrogen maser there's all their difference but physics package you require which depends on the what particular element you are using and after that it is a control system that are uh, the I'm sorry, sir. Your voice is breaking. Even your video is not visible. So my request is, you kindly switch off your video so that we can hear your voice. Santosh ji, will you please talk to him? sir your voice is breaking and your video is not visible am i audible to you sir now it is okay now it is okay sir we are able to see you hi what is that but no no slide sir no uh, no slide is there so my request is you kindly switch off your video so that your audio will be clear maybe the connection is not very strong no. internet connectivity no. No. your voice is breaking no. sir yet still we are not able to hear you um the crystal is made of that this is so your voice yes. is not clear yes Please. is it okay yeah now it is okay sir now it is okay okay now because i think link got disturbed 
Now, yes, next, sir. Next slide, next slide, please. Sir, will you explain this slide? We are like VC XO. VC XO. Or the OXO. Yeah. yeah, what yeah. is OXO and what? Oh, there are two technologies. What is OXO and uh, this? What is VL, VC XO, OC XO and VC XO? Okay. This is a local oscillator, what we call a crystal oscillator. And VCXO is a voltage control oscillator. And OCXO is oven control oscillator. That is to improve the stability of the crystal oscillator because crystal oscillator is sensitive to temperature variation. So voltage control oscillator, that means you are changing the um, uh, frequency of the crystal oscillator very slightly by a tuning voltage. And OCXO is that oven control, that means you are putting the crystal in a constant temperature so that it doesn't have a chance to vary its own frequency with the temperature variation outside. That is what is VCXO and FXO. I think it is clear. Huh. Now, next slide, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. OK. Now, uh, they have the one important event I would like to mention is that in 1955, the SN and Perry first developed an atomic clock with based on cesium atom. And though the first clock what he developed, it was not very accurate, but demo they demonstrated the concept that is very important. And based on that very concept, how it will be need to be developed, the atomic clock very first started improving. And at present, atomic clock is far, far better than a crystal oscillator in stability, accuracy, and reliability. Next, please. So there are three types of atomic clock at present are commercially available. One is the hydrogen major, one is the cesium atomic clock, and other is the rubidium atomic clock. And each has its own uh, own feature and special merit, but cesium atomic clock is assumed to be the best one so far as the maintenance of the clock. And here you can see the photographs of different types of clock. There is another one which I have not mentioned yet is that cesium fountain. Cesium fountain is a clock is not available yet now in the commercially, <coughs> but there are few laboratories who has developed it in the laboratory only uh, to my count it is 10 to 12 laboratories across the world has developed it and i am very happy to tell you and you must be aware of it that out of the 12 laboratories in the world npl is one of them so npl has its own cesium fountain next please so this is the comparative um, um, uh, performance for example uh, cheap quartz oscillator, which is TCXO, I have mentioned you, uh, temperature compensated oscillator. And it has a uh, time accuracy of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 and uh, frequency is 10 to the power minus uh, 11. Now, and if you go to a oven control oscillator, that is high quality quartz, it's uh, give a time of the aggregate as of 10 microsecond. And, but you go to the rubidium clock, it can keep time up to 10 nanosecond, whereas cesium is 10, 1 nanosecond. This is the best time giving capability. And here, hydrogen measure, I can tell you that it is also as good as cesium, 1 nanosecond, but and also it has a better uh, frequency uh, stability, but it is not used as a primary standard at present because it has to be calibrated with cesium clock. Uh, but this is also used because of the very good stability for the development of the atomic time scale. And cesium fountain, as I just now mentioned, not commercially available, but it has an accuracy of the 10 picosecond, 100 picosecond, which is very, very good. Now here I'd like to mention um, uh, the last one is that optical clock, which promises 10 to the power minus 18 uh, accuracy, which is very, very, good, far better than the cesium fountain even. Uh, but it is still in a laboratory model and it is being experimented and its performance is being evaluated. And based on this, 
there is a possibility that the definition of the second in near future will change based on optical clocks which is so it is there is a debate going on and almost it is expected by 2030 um, uh, the the definition of the second will change it will switch over to the optical clocks so a lot of work going on next please now this is a very important graph which uh, i prepared particularly for this talk is that you can see that in the last 100 years has a shown an explosive growth of the accuracy in the clock the first 1000 years back the uh, the uh, accuracy of the time was very slowly improving and you can see that up to uh, 1700 or 1800 it was started going up little after the uh, discovery of pendulum clock but the major growth was shown after the discovery of quartz crystal calculator and the first cesium clock so you can see uh, that at the last 100 years the time and frequency things has shown a remarkable improvement it is improved by the factor of nine it is too good and uh, in the past 100 years it has improved by the factor of nine that means factor of a billion so that is what is the status next please now i have till now talking about the different clock now i'll talk about the evolution of the definition of the second how second was defined a one interesting thing you must note that pendulum and quartz clock were quite good but they were never used to define a second they were clock but they were never used to define a second till 1956 the the length of the main solar day was used to define a second not pendulum not quartz crystal oscillator the the till 1956 it was the uh, it was the rotation of the earth around the moon axis was used to define a second and the early clocks were essentially just ways to interpolate between sunrises now the question is that when i am emphasizing the word 1956 why 1956 so thing is that uh, next plus side please the during when the quartz crystal next please was covered and was developed developed then it was found for the first time the earth rotation rate is variable it is not fixed there are many reasons has been found that large scale movement of the water yearly melting of the snow and the moon raises the tides and the ocean causing a tidal friction physical process inside the mantle and global events like tsunami these are the reasons why the ready, uh, 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 rotation rate is changing and this happens regularly the you can see on the right hand side the graph which shows the variation of the length of the day um, uh, over uh, 86400 seconds that means uh, leaving that 24 hours the plus minus is so many milliseconds two to three a plus minus four millisecond it varies over the days and this is this is when you are talking about the atomic clock this cannot be tolerated next please so 1956 atomic clock has not yet come so people thought that when we have already seen that clock um, art is not constant and rotating at a variable rate so let us define a new definition of the second based on the rotation of the revolution of the art around sun instead of its own axis so let us and that is more much more stable than uh, the art uh, rotation around its own axis 
so this is called ephemeris time so uh, it is very uh, complicated process to uh, determine the uh, uniformity of the second but it was done in the meantime in 1960 early 1960 atomic clock was developed and it Is stable of the Earth around its own around Sun. So, so then people started thinking that why not to change the definition of the uh, second based on atomic clock. So the life of ephemeris time was very short. It was 1956 to 1967, roughly 10 years. Next, please. Now, so second was defined. Based on the cesium atomic clock, which was stable and commercially available, you can see this is the picture of a, uh, a cesium atomic clock available in the market. And so the second is the duration of 9192631770 period of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperplane levels of the ground state of the cesium 133. The, this number is unique 919631770 it was decided to match with the ephemeris time at that moment so then it was fixed next please so till now i have talked about how a clock was developed how second was defined now let me talk little about what do you mean by the frequency what do you mean by the phase which is very important for the making measurement so just talking about the clock is not uh, end of the subject but we we'll have to see how we can make use of it and how we can talk about nanosecond microsecond picosecond how do you do it acha now i'll come to the very basic physics that uh, on the left hand side you can see a clean oscillator noiseless oscillator but if you develop an oscillator uh, it is never as good as that the the right hand side oscillation is actually the practical though it is slightly exaggerated than what i have shown but it is to explain to the audience that what it means that means there is a variation in the phase variation in the little bit frequency variation in little bit amplitude that is what practical is so so according to that the equation of the um, uh, a oscillation can be written as we have been taught in our school days that vt is equal to v0 plus epsilon t which is the amplitude variation <coughs> and sin twice phi nu0 t uh, plus phi t and phi t will take out the both frequency and phase oscillation so now if you talk about the frequency then frequency is is the nu0 plus a, a plus a variation part so the one important thing you must note about the frequency which you might not have noticed earlier so that is that is uh, uh, which you might not noted earlier is that frequency has two definition one is that number of cycles per second and the second is rate of phase change of phase so you notice it the very definition of the frequency says that you will have to make an observation over a certain length of time if you want to measure the number of cycles then it should be per second or if you measure it for 10 second then divide it by 10 to get number of cycles per second similarly rate of change of phase then you will have to observe the phase variations over a certain time which means that frequency cannot be measured frequency cannot be measured instantaneously you cannot measure it instantaneously you have to average over a certain time so that is why we always talk about the frequency measurement over a certain time if you would like to talk about the stability we call it short term stability long term stability that is why the short term and long term comes that you have to observe it for a certain time if you over a short time then it is short time stability you observe is over a long time then it's a long term stability that is what is important now and phase is very important and that 
is not in time and frequency metrology. It, we do not use it in terms of the radian or degree. We use the phase term in terms of the time and the dimension of time. So we have slightly changed the uh, definition of the phase xt as phi t by twice phi nu zero to change its dimension to time to second. So, uh, so it is the value of the it is the uh, x which is actually time which is measure. If you measure the time when we take about the microsecond nanosecond, then actually we are telling you the value of x. In in other words, it is a phase, but it is in the dimension of time and which is phi z phi by twice phi nu zero. <coughs> The fractional frequency offset, which is a is a frequency, but in a measured in a different way, it is a fractional frequency nu minus nu zero by nu zero, which is a dimensionless. Please note, this is dimensionless. This is the frequency offset. The we normally measure x t and y t in time and frequency metrology. So, and you please note. Yt is equal to dx dt, and if you would like to have x in terms of y, then x will be integration of y. So this is actually used in the basic measurement system. Next, please. So now I just now talk about that uh, that oscillations I have shown that there is a uh, change in the both frequency and phase. So when you are talking about the change in frequency and phase, then you'll have to talk about accuracy and stability. What is stability? Stability indicates that an oscillation can produce some time and frequency offset over a given proceed of time. So it can fluctuate. So because uh, the, all the oscillators is not very stable. And accuracy is that how much it is off from the standard frequency or reference frequency, nominal frequency. Suppose you say that this oscillator is 5 megahertz, and if you measure it, it may not be exactly 5 megahertz, it may be 1 hertz less or 1 kilohertz less. So that is the fluctuation. So we'll have to talk about fluctuation. When you talk about the fluctuation, we talk about y. When you talk about the phase fluctuation, we talk about x. So x and y, uh, suppose here, in the Cartesian coordinate in the picture, the lower picture is the Cartesian coordinate fluctuation of the uh, frequency. And in the polar coordinate, uh, in the, uh, in a, um, it has been represented the same type of measurement uh, in the uh, upper, upper pictures. So this is one way of presenting the uh, uh, stability and the clock. And let me a little bit explain the uh, Cartesian coordinates system that you can see the uh, the right hand side uh, most uh, left hand side is a, um, a signal is not varying much but it is little over the dotted line that means we can say it is a stable because it is not varying much but not accurate had it been coinciding with the dotted line it would have been accurate uh, it would have been accurate so that is the situation, is the ideal situation that is happening in the right, most right hand side picture. You can see that variation is less and it is sitting over the dotted line. The other two when it is very bad oscillators. Next, please. So how do you estimate the accuracy and stability? So don't, uh, uh, don't I don't like to bother with a lot of mathematics, but it is important to understand the very basic. So so the y I have y t I have already explained. This is the uh, uh, fractional frequency offset, and x also I have said this is the phase. Now the the uh, frequency fluctuations and x uh, time phase fluctuations uh, is not a stationary data in the case of time and frequency domain. The, why do you mean by stationary data? That is, it is not the same character whenever you make the measurement because there is a fluctuation, noise fluctuation, and also there is a drift in the frequency. So, so unless it is a standard uh, sort of stationary data, 
if it is stationary data, you can use the normal uh, jitter, the standard deviation, and the average. But when the uh, in the time and frequency oscillator is a non-stationary data, so in the case of non-stationary data, mean and standard deviation never converge to a particular value. It keeps on changing like a moving average. So, so what to do with that? So for that reason, a non-classical statistics is used in the case of time and frequency measurement. That is why you talk about Allen variance, Allen deviations, and modified Allen deviations, uh, Hadamard IDM deviations. So that is the things. This is a, uh, if I would like to go in detail on that, I'll have to do a lot of matters. I'll skip that. But you please note that it is a non-classical way to measure this stability, but it gives a good idea of this stability. Next, please. Now, this is the uh, frequency stability in terms of Allen deviation has been shown for your just information that I have, as I told, the hydrogen measure has a very good stability, even better than cesium. Uh, but as because it has to be calibrated time to time with the cesium, so it is not used as definition of be still based on cesium because cesium is uh, then have a uh, good acute uh, good stability better than rubidium and quartz crystal oscillator. Next, please. So now, how do we measure the frequency and phase offset? So here, I will tell you that frequency offset can be measured either in frequency domain or in time domain. You might have heard of the frequency domain analysis and time domain analysis. I'll go, I'll not go to the mathematics in detail, but I would like to give you the idea. In frequency domain measurements, it involves directly the counter, which you will give you the value. What is the value of the frequency? That is means new, not yt. Please note. When a counter will give the value, what is the frequency, whether it is uh, 5.001 megahertz. So it is a new, not yt. And if you know the new, then and you know the nominal value of the frequency, you can get yt. So, so that sort of simple mathematics will give you the measurement of the frequency in the frequency domain. But if you go to the, uh, in the, if you go to the, uh, time domain, the frequency offset can easily measure that you measure xt, tell the difference dx over a certain time dt. So, difference of these two, uh, uh, subdivision of these two is will give you the frequency offset. So, we'll have to measure uh, the variation of the x over a certain time. Suppose at, at t1, we may measure a value of x1 at t2 we measure a value of x2 then x2 minus x1 is dx and the measurement has continued for a period is del t so you will get del x by del t so this can be done easily from a time interval counter this is a, a block diagram i have shown and uh, where that uh, you should have a reference oscillator with respect to which you are measuring the phase and dut means device under test. Suppose if you have an oscillator, you would like to measure the phase difference between them, then you compare with the reference frequency. And frequency offset measurement as well as the phase comparison measurement can be done with a directly time interval counter. This is how we make the measurement. So now uh, uh, I should give you some idea about how we measure the frequency and the um, phase in a laboratory. Next, please. So now I'll talk a simple thing about the uh, world time zone. You see that as because sun, for the sunrise and sunset, differs from different longitude. So we'll have to change the time, local time, not the UTC, local time. So local time, so to make this more uniform, so it has been 24, time zone has been made and uh, the proposal is to divide the whole world into a 24 time zone. So by 1929, the uh, majority of country adopted it, but India, Iran and Myanmar and uh, Australia, they didn't adapt one hour zone.
they adopted 30 minutes offset again to that. So as you know, that Indian time, IST, Indian standard time, is offset by 5 hours 30 minutes, not 5 hours or 6 hours. It is 5 hours 30 minutes uh, 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 from the UTC. So this is a decision depending on the uh, uh, local countries' uh, convenience and the need of the industry and all these things. This is a decision of the respective country. But the proposal is a uh, general, generous company if they would like to adopt it. For the Nepal, Nepal has gone in a very different way. They have uh, 5 hours 45 minutes. So it's not even 30 nor the 6 hours. So that's a very uh, interesting way of doing it. So, but one thing is that as because it is a differing mostly by hour. So if all the clocks around the world is set to ETC, then you will find their local time is differing only in the hour value, not in the second or in the minute. Unfortunately, I, am, I, I have the link uh, adopted to show you the real time at present. But I don't know, I will not be able to do If anyone click here in the second, if you are uh, people can Santoji, do that. Santoshi, please try it if it runs. Uh, uh, yes, you have another 45 minutes. We have one hour, sir. Please. We have one hour. You continue, please. Okay. So now the thing is that um, uh, this is. What is the status of uh, clock in NPL? In NPL, it started with the ascending crystal oscillator and through which there was a ETA transmission. But in 1974, NPL purchased CCM atomic clock. This is the first atomic clock in India. So, uh, uh, so there was a lot of uh, news in the Indian newspaper that the NPL purchased a atomic clock which is very very expensive but at present the situation of npl is very very um, good in the sense that they have i have shown only five clocks here but at present i was told they have a much more number of clocks it is i think it may exceed uh, eight nine ten something like that i do not have the count right now and in addition to the cesium atomic clock uh, they have few hydrogen measures and that is also a very good thing. In addition, as I mentioned you, NPL is a, has a, uh, is a very uh, uh, important position in the world that it has a cesium fountain is one of the 10, 12 laboratories of the world. This is a very pride situation of NPL. Next, please. Now, I'll, I'll spend maybe one or two minutes here that you see that now you know that cesium atomic clock is scattered all over the world. There are a number of clocks across the world globe. And each one is a primary standard of Sir, your now, is breaking. The question is so and it's Sir, we are not able to hear you. Yes, should I continue? Please, 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 sir. No, it is okay. Okay. So now, uh, so average of the clock is definitely better than the um, uh, individual clock. Now, question is come, how to make average? Because all scattered all over the world. Next, please. So, the all clocks in the lab, we can always uh, compare. But when it is geographically separated, how to connect them? The only way you can connect is that you compare those clocks with the GPS signal. 
GPS signal being common to all the places. So it is then once you get the reference. Uh, uh, minus GPS signal and it to get it all, all these things, then you can inter compare. Next, please. Okay. So by using the average. Now the concept of coordinated time universal time, that is UTC, which you all know has emerged. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible now. Okay. So now the UTC, how it is generated. UTC, the internationally recognized atomic time scale based on definition of the second. As I was talking about the average, the average value of UCT is computed by BIPM at the central place, coordinating body. They collect the data of around 450 atomic clocks across the world from 80 national metrology institutes, including India. So, what they, they get the data of what is gathered by respective GPS receiver from uh, each lab. And each lab send those data to the BIPM. And BIPM, by some proper algorithm, very intelligent algorithm, they make an average time scale. And please note, the UTC is a paper time scale, not a physical clock. Now you can say, then how will then we make a physical clock? What good point is that BIPM send the data to each lab saying, that with your clock, UTC is this difference. Suppose if they say uh, NPL clock is two micro nanosecond different from the UTC, then NPL has UTC. Not only UTC, NPL I, but also UTC, because if they defy, change the difference, then it is equivalent. So that is how UTC realized, though it is a proper clock, so each lab has a facilities to implement or rather realize their UTC time scale. And BIPM publish this data every month. So within a month, you will get that what is the status of the each laboratories and it is publicly available. So anybody can know what is the status of NPL, what is the status of NPL with respect to other good clocks. And, and next please, I'll show you what is the status? This is how it is. Next, please. Next. Next. And this shows the data where NPL stand. This is a very recent data. It is a June 29 data. That is only last month. So you can see how beautifully NPLI is placed. It is only fraction of a nanosecond off from UTC. And it is, and you can see there, I can show, I have shown beautiful clocks also that, that they are also as good as NPL. So NPL is, has, a, has a status as of today, is as good as many very uh, timekeeping laboratories of the world. It is equally positioned. So they are very positioned, good position. Next, please. So this is the, uh, the same data has been plotted. And there are different, you see that they are all within Two, three nanoseconds and that is a very good thing out of that one of them is npl next please okay now i have talked about utc now uh, there is another few time scale you must be aware that one is tai one is utc what is tai tai is the if you run a cesium atomic clock without giving a adjustment as UTC, that leap second. Leap second I have not introduced yet to the audience. I'll just talk about leap second. So if you add leap second to TAI, then it becomes UTC. So, and UTC is the TAI corrected for the leap second. So 
So there are two units. One is that uh, atomic clock running without any change in the leap second. And you to see, you give a delta. Why, why this leap second is given? Please, next slide, please. Now, the an integer second added to time uh, to keep, it is with the astronomical time. So astronomical time, that means based on the rotation of the Earth, which human beings are used to. We are, we are in a solar system, so we'll have to follow what is happening in the sun. So you cannot go away from that. So we'll have to keep in emission with the UTI. The leap second usually occur every 30, uh, uh, every uh, uh, leap second usually given on June 30th and 31st December. It is not to be given every every year or every June. So whenever it is needed, this is uh, International uh, Union of Art Rotation Service. Uh, they decide when to be given leap second. So at present, the last leap second was given uh, uh, on December 31st, 2005. And <clears throat> after that, uh, and the at present, the uh, uh, the leap second status is only uh, 37 seconds ahead of MTI. TAI. Now, next, please. So now I'll talk about the quickly time transfer and applications. Now, why why do we require a time transfer? Because every uh, users across the world must know what time it is and what is time with respect to a reference, for example, IST. <coughs> Whenever you send the time, there will be delay in the transfer. So we'll have to determine the delay and that will basically define the accuracy of the time transfer technique. Next, please. Now, with the uh, passage of time, there are many time transfer techniques developed in the, in the 1330, well before the <coughs> developed uh, science, uh, civilization has not much developed and technology must develop. There was a charge well uh, uh, was giving the time and the factory siren. Then came the when uh, the breakthrough was in the 1920, uh, when the uh, electromagnetic signal transmission was understood and a lot of technology developed. Then people started sending the time signal to get a time transfer and the wired medium, telegraphic link, Lorentz C, Omega C was used as a navigation system and but and also internet through net. So that is still NTP and PTP is still used, but the Loran Omega and the uh, other transmission has become obsolete by now. The basic breakthrough was in 1957 with the advent of the satellite. So then geostatic satellite came, GNSS came, and two-way trans transport started. Next, please. So, so all clocks have digital and display and also one pulse per second. That is how one pulse per second is transmitted to have the time transfer. So that in mind, which started with the uh, 1920 when the transmission of time signal started. Next, please. Now, what is time transfer? I'll in short tell you that. This is the clock pulses, and I have to transmit what that what is the value of that time, what is the signature of that particular pulse, and the face of this pulse. To transmit it to the user, I require a transmitter, and <coughs> and to get this time at the user end, you require a receiver. So this receiver and transmitter, it depends on the what is the type of signal you are transmitting. <coughs> And it can be by wire and it can be wireless. The important thing is that how much time it takes from the transmitter to the receiver to reach the signal is the delay. And that delay has to be determined properly and that will determine the accuracy of the time transfer. Next, please. Now, at present, the most popular use 
true wired system without wireless is that NTP is the uh, network time protocol. What is this? This is your true internet. You send the time signal in a packet switch mode, not pulse, but it is a packet switch mode. So from which you can get the time and that is quite accurate. And it, you have heard of the stratum one, stratum two, stratum zero. That is mainly is a hierarchical system so that it the, the server, one server is not overloaded by the client users so that they have sterified so that it goes to uh, who is near the stratum one, stratum two will get the time. Next, please. Next, please. So, the NTP service already started by NPL and different promises is linked by network time display uh, system uh, coupled with NTP and that is very popular these days in India. So as a result of NTP, lower accuracy services are losing importance due to the wide popularity and easy access of NTP servers supported by NTP. Next, please. Now, this is the talk of the uh, world today is GNSS system. Previously started with the forerunner, forerunner was GPS, and now the Galileo has come, GLONASS has come, and Bidocrum. Next, please. Then also, the India joined this club, and they have started transmitting time signal through a NABIC system, and which is now very popular in India. I'll talk about that in short time. Next, please. And let's skip this one. Everybody knows what is GPS. I skip this one. There is nothing new to say. Please, next, please. Next, please. I don't like to talk relativistic right now. If there is a question, I will answer. So, now, previous one, please. Okay, thank you. So, now, to, uh, we'll have to see that how I was talking about the accuracy. Now, what is the limitation of the accuracy of the GNSS system? This is true for even navigation. See, there is a satellite clock, you know, uh, which transmit time signal. Now, satellite clock accuracy, I have shown it in terms of the meter. And if you multiply it uh, by 3.3, you'll get the uh, nanosecond. So, so if I call, call satellite clock is off by 2.1 meter, that means it is roughly 6 nanosecond off. Uh, ephemeris time is 2.1 meter. Anospheric error is 4 meter. Tropospheric 0.7. Multipath. Multipath, you know that if signal is not directly received, reflected by some other bodies or building or trees, uh, then it will give some error. That is 1.4 and receiver noise in 1.5. So total is uh, 5.3 and 5.3 you multiply it by 3.3 it comes about 35 nanosecond so 35 nanosecond is the uh, error of the gnss system now you can say that oh this is not true because gns system gives much better accuracy yes you are right that there are many methods how to improve the accuracy and they talk about all these all these parameters they would like to reduce how we can reduce it one important thing you may note in this table is that highest inaccuracy, that means false error that is given by the ionosphere. So if you take care of the ionosphere error, you will very largely improve the accuracy. Next, please. So there is a um, uh, special um, technique how to improve the time accuracy instead of using the normal GPS receiver, but there is a special receiver is coming where you can feed the time signal, um, where you can feed the coordinates of the place and you will get very good time. Next, please. Now, next, please. Uh, uh, so this is the timing special GPS timing receiver. GNSS I'll talk about instead of only GPS. Uh, uh, so it has its inbuilt time interval counter, so it can directly compare the clock 
with the GPS signal and you can get the what is the offset of the GPS time clock with respect to GPS. Next please. So this is the format in which it gives the data. Next please. Next please. So now how we improve the timing accuracy? One is the common view GPS. What is common view? That means when two laboratories compare with GPS, they should see the same satellite at the both the ends. If you would like to see the same satellite at the both the end, you will get a better accuracy because the idea because it is a common satellite, so most of the error would get cancelled. So the problem is that in making common view is that you can see there are uh, uh, two satellites uh, in a shadow of mode uh, because those satellites, even they are present, you cannot use in a common view because the one satellite, what is available at the uh, left hand side, the same satellite is not available at the right hand side. So you cannot use them. So you will have to leave some of the satellite though available and give time. You cannot use in a common view mode. So common view mode has a very good accuracy, but it has a disadvantage. Next, please. Then came all in view. That means we'll not use only common view. Let us at the both the end use all the satellites and make an average of it. But if you make an average that all the satellite doesn't have the same type of error, so averaging may not give a very good accuracy. So the sources of inaccuracy is that ephemeris error, uh, ionospheric error, and the uh, clock error of the satellite. So these three items, if I eliminate it, then I'll get a better accuracy. That can be done with the help of IGS network. IGS network, next please. I'll show you the IGS network. IGS network is the many, many uh, monitoring stations across the world, including there are three monitoring stations in India. You can see that blue and two red dot in India. So <clears throat> they monitor the uh, GNSS signal regularly and send it to a central body to generate the correct ephemeris and the satellite clock error. So that is used for improving the accuracy of the time transfer. Next, please. So now another thing is that concept of P3. That means we it is well established that if you receive two frequency, separate frequency, L1, LL2 from a GPS receiver, then you can get the anospheric error corrected. That is what is called P3. And if you are anospheric corrected correctly, then as I mentioned you earlier, that four meter is the error in the anosphere that will be get totally cancelled and you will get a major improvement in the time accuracy. Next, please. Next, here I have pointed out that that four nanosecond has been zero almost. Next, next, please. So, so PPP is a method that precise point positioning system through which both you can improve the position and the time by eliminating all the sources of error. This is a new technique has been developed, uh, though it is not a very new one, but uh, quite a five, 10 years back, people started using it. And NPL is also using this technique. You can get a one nanosecond accuracy or even sub nanosecond accuracy we should use ppp technique to improve the time next please so for using this technique there are many software available uh, rather open yeah, source you need not to pay for it for the binarical you can use jpl you can use bernese you can use Normally in India, we use mainly NRCAN software. And if you feed the data of the GPS, you'll get the correct time within uh, uh, better than one nanosecond. Next, please. 
so there is another method this two way time transfer this is a, a different way of doing it it is not the satellite transmit the signal whereas through satellite you extend the time signal of the comparing clocks so one is transmitting and other is receiving and other is transmitting the one is receiving so this way you can make uh, a simultaneous measurement and all the errors are get cancelled this is one of the very good technique and this is how npl uh, transmit uh, compare the clock of the isro center which which transmit navic signal so they do it through this technique but this technique has a disadvantage is that you require a satellite and you will have to get time from the satellite with giving some money but india uh, the isro and npl has an advantage because india has its own satellite so they need not to pay they can use this satellite for the time transfer next please <clears throat> next please okay this is a good table which compare the accuracy of the different techniques elect broadcast and telephone line i will not talk about because these are the very nominal way of comparing clock but ntp is very important ntp gives 10 millisecond accuracy which serve most of the users 10 millisecond is very good for most of the users unless you are giving making some scientific experiment or something like that so this is already in operation in india gnss broadcast you can get the gnss satellite including navic signal and you can get 20 to 50 nanosecond accuracy <coughs> gnss is all in view is 23 nanosecond and gnss ppp will give you 500 picosecond so you please note what a jump in the accuracy 500 nanosecond two way transfer cannot be used always because you have to look for a satellite and you will have to get access and it's a very complicated arrangement also i have also seen the setup cost you can see that it is setup cost is 100k dollar uh, in two way time transfer whereas you can talk about see that ntp is hardly 2k and uh, uh, glonals and all this thing it is within some 20 30k whereas if you go for a time transfer uh, through a two way technique then it is 100k this is quite costly uh, fiber optics is another thing that is coming because because that is the only method which can compare the optical clock and unless you establish the optical clock optic fiber optics technique your definition of the second cannot change because you will have to get the comparison between the optical clocks because optical clock is set to minus 8 and unless you use the fiber optics you cannot get to set to the minus 18 uh, two way transfer is only go up to 10 to the minus 15 so to get um, matching time transfers for the optical clock you will have to go to 10 to the minus 18 that is fiber optics next please next please okay next please okay now i'll go to that last section of my talk is that uh, now you can uh, this is a fault that how many satellites you can get at a time there are many many satellites available you have a gps satellite you have a baidu satellite you have a glonass um, uh, satellite you have a navic satellite so this is a uh, uh, sky plot that at a particular time in Bardhavan University, we have seen 48 visible satellites. Next, please. Next. Okay. Now let us come to the last part of my talk is that how time and frequency is useful for the society. Now, few seconds to a fraction of a second accuracy is sufficient for the public transportation, meeting people, television program radio broadcast that requires a simple mechanical clock but only clock will not do it has to set with a indian standard time so this can be done even with the ntp you can use ntp because npl stands send transmitter times through ntp so if you 
check with the NTP as I have shown that NTP has a capability of 10 milliseconds. So you can set your all clock within 10 milliseconds very easily. Another important thing, which people without knowing what time and frequency is doing, they use GPS in our uh, uh, mobile. And all mobile is set to better than one second is because, because all mobiles is set to GPS. And they do not know what time and frequency behind that scene is working. In very soon, you will get a mobile clock which is set by Navic signal. So this is the crude users who require only fraction of a second. Next, please. So there are precise users. For example, teleconversion network, electric power, widely separated reference for the Gagan station. Space research applications, VLBI, astronomy, widely separated ultra stable clock, electronic instrumentation, digital data exchange, fundamental data. I'll little bit detail about this. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Now, power grid management. It is very important thing is that because today electric grids receives power from a different sources for example for example if you go to uh, different places in, in delhi you'll get that their solar uh, power system they give power to the national grid so that they can supplement it so there are many places if you have an extra power in the solar by solar technique solar cell you can give it to the national grid network so so all this grid network has to be all synchronized and do you require a, uh, a, um, uh, a synchronization of the uh, system uh, uh, to the order of microsecond? So, so uh, the failure. And next is that financial transaction. So, if you go to the national exchange, it was a chaos. But today, there is no problem because. There is a cluster of computer all synchronized to NTP, and you will get a very good timing of all the uh, national stock exchange. Next, please. Next, please. Now, it is a very important thing is that now the first acted to increase the level of data transfer has become indispensable in the modern and hectic life of this society. Data is everywhere, and all data. To get access, you require a proper synchronization. Otherwise, you will miss the data because this time multiplexing thing is that if it's not properly timed, one data will go into the other data and there will be a lot of mixture. You will not get a reliable, authentic data. So, providing synchronization of the cloud database is main challenge when it comes to precise timing. It is a main challenge, but it is being done. Next, please. Okay. Now, why I am talking about the pulsar timing um, uh, may not be important for the uh, layman, but only crude users. But it is important because I uh, I'll come to that that there was a news in the Hindustan Times that uh, that they have uh, discovered gravitational wave. They have seen the presence of the gravitational wave. It was only possible. Because of the development of the time and frequency uh, uh, metrology. Why? Because pulsar is a uh, solar mass size neutron star rotating at a speed with the uh, uh, millisecond. But there they send the, the time signal, which is very, very accurate. So, very, very accurate, and it has to be compared with the, and this is the time signals has been recorded in GMRT in Pune. And this is, uh, so by looking at the pulse, looking at the pulsar time, you can, you can, you can see the presence of the gravitational wave. Next time, please, next, please. So this is the news. I, this is a uh, paper clocking, uh, clipping the, uh, uh, this was the, in the old world, they have detected the presence of the gravitational wave was confirmed, and you will be you will be happy to know that in this experiment, GMRT 
Pune was a participant and they also detected uh, the same event and this was through pulsar timing this was this could be done only with the pulsar timing so so that is again a development in the time and frequency metrology next please another is that what is the sk kilo array sk is the next generation radio telescope with a very high accuracy and highly sensitive to see the cosmos world and different uh, radio shows and to be successful the sk you require a precise timing of the whole network otherwise it will not be possible so there comes the time and frequency metrology even the rotation of the earth uh, where how much it is varying on all these things these days has been studied by vlbi a very long base interferometry technique which needs a synchronization of all the antennas across the world <laughs> next please now there are many special application like the i talked about optical clock which is of the order of 10 to the power minus 18 and according to relativity theory that if you move 1 km above the surface of the earth your clock will go offset by 10 to the power minus 13 but as because you have already clock 10 to the power minus 18 that means you can detect even a 1 cm change in the level by an atomic clock that optical clock so it is a centimeter level height sensor which is not possible otherwise precise accelerator you have talked about cern i everybody knows that it has been doing lot of experiment uh, so they need a very precise timing and that is done with a ptp precise time protocol enabled with uh, uh, white rabbit technique similarly uh, seismic studies ultra stable space clock variation of fundamental constant and all these things is very very important in the time and frequency metrology uh, i have the last slide next please uh, this last slide is what i am trying to say is that future advances in timing field are largely unforeseen you cannot predict why because we have seen over the 100 years the time and frequency accuracy has shown an explosive growth but that is not the end of it it is keeping on uh, improving and <coughs> and accordingly to match with this accuracy many technologies technological progress is going on so the way the time keeping devices and transport technique are making headway in their capabilities it may unravel many more unforeseen fundamental of physics yet unfathom and we do not know what is in store in future with this let me conclude my talk and thank you for your attention thank you thank you very much sir for your beautiful and the wonderful talk actually it is very much a new subject over which we are considering in india and how we can disseminate the indian standard time in our continent thank you very much sir we have large number of participants i would like to request all the participants to kindly switch on their video and switch off their mic so that we can take few pictures to put it on our all social media portals like uh, instagram twitter facebook and uh, others for our available and so with your kind permission we will place your presentation to all the participants we will share it and also the So video will put it in our facebook as well as youtube channel thank you sir thank you very much sir now i would like to request a uh, few of the participants if they wish to ask any of the question or something you need to add you are most welcome uh, even from the outside participants uh, mr uh, my great friend uh, mr uh, he was asking me uh, you you want to speak something sir yeah um I guess you can hear me now. Yeah, we can hear you. Please, okay. sir. Please continue. Yeah, yeah good. Mr. Okay, okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, all the participants. Um, this workshop. Uh, first, I want to thank you very much for all you've done 
um, in organizing this uh, workshop and this series of workshops. Uh, first, I, I want to send um, across um, a warm greetings from my director. She has been helpful. And uh, first, I want to acknowledge what you guys have done and um, the permission you've extended to us. Um, for the management and the staff, we want to appreciate all the good work. I uh, really want to say that um, we, we, we've had so much benefit you know, participating in this workshop. Uh, primarily, it has um, actually helped us in enhancing the um, uh, building program. It really exposed us to a lot of concepts and it has helped greatly because. Uh, Knowledge itself is something we always uh, want to acquire, and so much, so much knowledge has been acquired to ask for what we want. And let's say I've had quite a good number of my officers, you know, partaking in this workshop. Close to ten percent of the workforce we have as a metallurgy officer, and it's been quite a, a very beautiful experience. I know we we'll have reasons to continue to be a part of this. We have communicated a number of times, and um, this has given room, you know, to a new vista in legal methodology for us as, as professionals and as a country. Learned so much. We hope to not really leave from what we've seen here because, you know, it's an opportunity to carry this what we call peer review uh, mechanism. Put it in place. See where you guys are. See how we can measure. Up. Uh, with so much information we're getting, the officers are now geared up on their own. There are a lot of things they can do because knowledge is out there. And we will sit in today across uh, the globe and we are communicating, getting um, knowledge, information that otherwise we would not have been able to have access to. But we're having it firsthand and it's quite beautiful. I want to really appreciate what you've, um, the opportunity you've given us to to be a major part of this event. And I know I've made a number of requests. Um, I know in time we'll be able to get them um, settled. I equally want to thank your my director. Today I saw his face very well. Uh, he has made a lot of emphasis on legal metrology. <laughs> the, the title is, he wants legal metrology aspect to be highlighted. And it's quite <laughs> So once again, I want to appreciate you and yeah. um, we'll continue to be a part. Whatever it is yeah, that we've learned here, you, in time you'll get to see. I know we'll have opportunity to meet at the OIML level. Um, that's a big forum. And maybe we'll communicate and work with the Asia Pacific uh, body as well. So thank you once again on behalf of my director, my co-management officers and the staff uh, nationwide. And thank you. We'll continue to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Highly honest. Thank you, sir. Anybody you. else who wish to add anything? I think Akansa Gupta is trying to ask a question. Anybody who wish to ask anything? Please, I have I have seen the hand, Akamra Gupta. Don't anybody who wish to ask any question, kindly switch on the mic. And it's Otherwise, it you can share it in WhatsApp group. We will try to get the reply from the honorable expert and reply you. So we will put this presentation as well as the video, this complete recording in the social media so that anybody can see at any point of time with your kind permission. Let me add, I have given my email address and uh, you can directly contact me for any clarification. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.